how is up guys so today we're going to continue our inventory system and i'm going to teach you how to create an item grid so that we can display all the items in the inventory okay so let's begin first things we need is go to the inventory folder blueprints on the inventory components and uh in the previous videos we created the slots array which essentially represents all the items that we have on our slots right so now we're going to create another space which will represent the items that are outside of our slots. So uh, on our backpack, for example. So here I'm going to duplicate the slots variable and call it backpack. Move it over here, for example. Now um, on the event graph, we need to make sure that the same way we fill up these slots with a specific size, we also need to fill up the backpack with a specific size. So here I'm just going to move this over here. I'm going to duplicate the fill macro, connect this here, get the backpack variable and connect to the array. And now both of the sizes, I'm going to uh, make them variables so that I can change this from the character, okay? So this one I can promote to variable and call it max slots. And um, this one I can promote to variable and call it backpack size, okay? Um, now I can compile save. And if I click the backpack size, I'm going to change the value to 20. So this way we'll have five uh, slots and then 20 additional slots on the backpack, okay? Now, next thing we need to do is make sure that when uh, we pick up an item, uh, if we have no more space on the slots, we're going to try to add it to the backpack. So here on the assign function that we created before, um, we're going to open this bind macro and here on the outputs, we're going to click this here we're going to remove the success boolean and the then we're going to change this to true okay and now we're going to connect the false pin directly over here okay and now we can move this up and that's basically it this way it will be easier for us to use this macro now we can close this and here on the assign function you can see now we have a true or false now, if we fail to add the item to the slots, we're going to try to add it to the backpack. So here I can get this bind macro again, connect to the false, the item will be the ID of the item. And now I can connect the backpack to the array like this. Now here I'm going to say return node and connect over here to the true. On the outputs, I'm going to add a new one and call it success. And over here, I'm going to check to true. Okay. And if I'm successfully able to add to the backpack as well, I'm going to uh, check success to true over here. Okay. So compile save. Um, now, what we need to do is on the give function where we uh, give the item to the player, we're calling the assign function here uh, before we add the item. So what we're going to do is uh, only add the item if we um, were able to assign the item to a specific space. So here I'm going to move this over here like this. We're going to move this here. Uh, from here I'm going to say branch and connect the true over there. Connect this over here. And here I'm going to say return and just return success to false. Okay. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, essentially send back an error code from this function uh, so that I'm able to know uh, what exactly happened and why uh, I wasn't able to pick up the item. Okay. So here I can add a new output called um, error like this, I can change this to string. And here I can say no space. Okay, I can send an error code back uh, that I will be able to read later. Okay. Now over here, um, if we didn't find the item on a data table, I'm also going to uh, send an error code saying not bound. Okay, that's basically it. So um, if we compile and save, and now if we go back to our character now, 
So over here to the character, if we open the interface function, the pickup item function, where we are calling the give function, you can see that now we have a pin for the error. So we can move this a little bit like this. And here, what we can do is say switch on string. Okay. And then we can click this, um, remove the default pin from here, add two elements. And the first one will be not found. So the error codes that we added on the other side and the other one, which was no space. Okay. So, and now if I connect this here to the false, I will be able to do different things depending on what happened. Okay. So I can send a message to the user saying, Hey, you have no space, for example, uh, something like that. So, um, here I'm just going to say print, and on both these cases, I'm just going to print the error code. So like this, okay. And that's basically it. So, um, the next thing I'm going to do is for example, if we click the AC inventory components, we can see that we have all of these properties here and it's, um, pretty illegible. I would say, uh, we have all these configurations, but then we have a bunch of stuff that we don't need. So to hide these things, we can go to the AC inventory components. We can open this up, for example, the hand object. And instead of setting the uh, variable to private, which uh, will block us from uh, access it from the reference, we can go to advanced and check advanced display. And this way we'll still be able to access the variable, but it will not show on the configuration. Okay. Now we can do the same to the items set to advanced display, to the active item, to the slots, to the backpack, uh, the HUD will be the same. Okay. Now the UI, we can do the same thing and that's basically it. So we can compile and save. And if we go back to the other side and click the inventory components, you will see that now everything is clean like this. Okay. All the other properties are inside the advanced section. Um, now next thing we're going to do is create the widget to display our items. So we're going to go over here to the inventory folder widgets. And here we're going to create uh, a new widget blueprint user widgets, and we can call this W be backpack. Okay. Open it up. Now over here, we're going to add a size box. Okay. Now inside this size box, we're going to add a scroll box. And inside this scroll box, we're going to add a grid panel. Okay. Like this. Now on the size box, we're going to set the height to 400 the max desired height to 400. And that's basically it. Now on the scroll box, we're going to set the vertical alignment to the bottom because we're going to use this on the bottom right and it will look better this way. Now on the grid panel, we're going to go to the uh, variable name over here and change it to item grid and just check is variable. Okay. Like this compile safe. Now we can go back to the graph over here and uh, we can delete all of this. We can create a new function here called fill so that we can fill up our grid. Okay. Now this one will receive some inputs. So the first one will be the order like this, which will be a name and it will be an array of names. Now the second one, which will be the items. And this will be a name, this will be a map, and this will be a ST item, ST inventory item. Okay. Now the next one will be uh, called max slots. It will be a uh, integer and here we'll change to single. Okay. That's basically it. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the item grid gets and say for your children. Make sure that we clear the grid before we add items to it. Okay. Now, next thing is get order to so get the variable from the function inputs, say for each like this, um, we can connect this like this. Now I can say get items 
and I can say find. And now I'm going to find the item that I'm trying to add to the grid. Now here I can say create widget. <clears throat> Connect this over here. And here I'm going to select the WB tile that we created in the previous videos. Now I'm going to connect the item over here. And that's basically it. Now, next thing uh, we need to do over here is create a grid logic so that we can control the size of our grid. So uh, to do that, I'm going to create two local variables. So the first one will be call, which will be our current column and we'll change to integer. Okay. And here I can add another one called row, which will be our current row. Okay. Now over here, I'm going to grab the column, say get and say if this is equal uh, and here I'm going to say get max slots. So if this is equal to the uh, max slots, I'm going to say branch connect over there. And um, if this is true, what I'm going to do is grab the column and say set and set it to zero. So I'm going to reset the columns. Now I'm going to grab the row. I'm going to say add. <clears throat> so I'm going to add one to the row. Now I'm going to set that uh, on the variable like this. Okay. Um, and now what we're going to do is grab the item grid and say add child to grid. Okay. And now this will allow us to specify a row and a column where we want to place our item. So I'm going to connect this over here and over there to the false. Okay. Now, um, the contents will be uh, the widget that we just created. The row will be our current row. And the column will be our current column like this. Now, um, over here, uh, what we need is to grab the column. Say add. And we're also going to add one to the column. Now we're going to grab the column, say set and set that as a variable value okay like this and that's basically it so this should um create a grid with all our items okay um now next thing we're going to do is add this widget to our general hud so here i'm going to open the wb hud on the wb slots that we created before i'm going to right click and say rep with vertical box okay this way we don't destroy the alignment and we wrap that thing with a vertical box. Now over here, I'm going to go to user created and drag the WB backpack that we created into the vertical box. I'm going to uh, drag the WB backpack up like this. And um, that's basically it. Now, uh, last thing is over here on the visibility, we're going to start with the visibility as collapsed. Okay. And this way we'll be able to um, open the inventory only when we press a specific key. Okay. Now on the graph, what we need to do is fill up this widget with the information that it needs. So here I'm going to grab the WB backpack. I'm going to say fill and I'm going to call the function that we just created. So over here on the update event, we're going to call that function. And now I can grab my AC inventory. I can say get backpack and connect over there. So to get all the backpack items, now I can say get items to get the items lists. And now I can say get max slots and connect over there. And that's basically it. Okay. So um, now what we need is to create a way to toggle the visibility on our uh, widget. Okay. So over here, I'm going to add a custom event and call it toggle. Okay. And now uh, what I'm going to do is create a new variable here called is open so that I know if the menu is open or not. I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to say branch. And um, now uh, I'm going to grab the WB backpack widget. Okay. I'm going to say set visibility. And uh, if the menu is open, then I'm going to set the visibility to collapse. I'm going to hide the menu. 
And then I'm going to grab the is open variable and set it to false. So it means the menu is now closed. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this too and connect over there. And uh, here I'm just going to change the visibility to visible and check is open. Okay. So if the menu is not open, I'm going to open. Okay. Uh, now, next thing we need to do is um, make sure that we can call this toggle event um, from our character. So to do that, um, we're going to create another bind on our inventory, which will allow us to essentially call a function directly from the inventory to open our menu. So um, here on the AC inventory component, we're going to add a new event dispatcher and call it on toggle okay now we're going to create a new function called open menu so this way we can call it okay now this on toggle we're going to call it over here and that's basically it now we can go to our character to the event graph and over here where we have all of these keys we're going to add the key q keyboards key over here and uh, now we're going to grab the AC inventory and say open menu. Okay, that's basically it. So now the last thing we need is to make sure that we are listening to that event on our uh, HUD widget. So here uh, we are going to do the same thing that we did with our update event. We're going to move this here. We're going to grab the inventory and say bind to on toggle. Okay, and now we'll be able to uh, do something every time um, the user calls that open menu function. So here I'm going to say create event and I'm going to select the toggle event. So this way I'll be able to toggle my menu uh, directly from my character. So uh, now if we hit play now, um, you'll see that the slots are here and if I press Q, you will see that I can now open my inventory and everything should be working fine. Okay. So now, for example, if you want to test out those uh, validations that we added to um, the GIF function, we can do uh, something simple as go to the character, the inventory uh, components and set the max slots to one and the backpack size to one. Okay, because I only have three items. So I'm going to pick one up to the slots. And now I'm going to pick the second one to the backpack. And I shouldn't be able to pick up this one. So I'm going to press E. And as you can see, it says no space. So uh, for example, in this case, you could like show a message or play a sound saying that you can't uh, pick it up because you don't have space. Um, but that's it. So I'm going to reset the max slots to five and the backpack size to 20 and hit play. And that's basically it guys. Uh, we have, uh, this, uh, inventory menu. Of course you can position this, uh, wherever you want, but the idea is here. The logic is all here. So it's pretty simple for you to adapt it the way that you want it. So um, that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something with it. And don't forget to subscribe.